Hello, good morning, happy Tuesday. I'm um, I am not too thrilled with the camera. Uh how it begins it it always seems to be like a little bit weird and then it repairs itself after a little bit of time so it's, uh, it's odd because i don't touch it at all and eventually just like oh right this is good we're we're okay uh sitsu hello how are you doing today i just need to leave and come back like last time i i wonder if that's it i wonder if it, if i like go off go off camera no i probably have to go for longer uh hmm. i don't know i don't know like I, I think in the, the past, I've actually, like, just looked over and it's been fixed on its own. That's that's happened before, too. Let's add cat cam because Zilby's here uh, looking out the window. Uh, here, I'll I'll test the going off camera thing by going and I'll, I'll pet Zilby for, for a little bit of time. And uh, then we'll see if that fixes it. And, well, what do you know? It, it did indeed as soon as I left. Okay, well, apparently I didn't. When I leaned over, I didn't leave enough for it to reset, but this time it did. I mean, of course, it could just be a timing thing of like how long it's it's active, but yeah. Okay, so I guess if that happens, we'll just it'll be a go get Zilby um uh reminder for from my camera. Uh, Zilby is super enthralled by a spider who's just sort of walking around, hanging out down there right outside the uh, the window. Uh, so I, I doubt he's going to come over and hang out with us, um, anytime soon, but, uh, we, we can actually watch him sort of look away from us. Anyways, um, I don't have my, I don't have the stream manager up right now because I realized that I left it in sort of like a really bad spate spot. I had this, uh, semicolon missing. Um, and, uh, let's see, that is going to allow us to have the countdown, uh, or at least to, to know how much time is going to be uh available for us from when we start so this is set the time remaining at okay so we set that and it's going to be like 60 for example because the it's just starting with like i think right now i have one minute every one minute of ads every 20 minutes i think that's how it how it works now uh, i was checking i was looking up and trying to research threads especially green threads with uh tokyo to see how what happens if i just you know launch something and then just forget about it and then let things go out of out of scope and because we're in a not in an asynchronous function here i don't even think i can make this asynchronous if i want to uh we're gonna have to use uh, I, if i want to set something up i would have to use um oh but that's state oh i can't i can't do anything with that okay never mind um what do I want to do? It won't be it won't be this. Basically, we receive a message and we okay, we receive this Twitch ads message and so we emit using the emitter. Can I clone the emitter? Is that something that I can do? How do I get the emitter? Okay, I just run runtime emitter. So theoretically I could get another emitter maybe. Now in here am I in an async function? I am not. So if I make this a block, we semicolon you, uh, and then I want to do a uh, what is it? Tokyo, ooh, but it's not. It's not just spawn. I want to spawn spawn blocking. That's what it is. I want to move. We don't really care what's in there. Uh, and specifically, what I want to take is I want to I want to copy this duration. So maybe around this, we'll have another block, and we'll just say our duration equals duration dot clone clone you into there which means you need to be actually don't need to clone you because if i clone you here i'd now have access to you in here uh but i do probably want to create a new runtime so new emitter so our runtime emitter so we have you so we're going to move both of those into here now i probably actually shouldn't do this yet i should probably wait until I, like it forces me to just to see if it will work. Okay, um, incompatible paths. Don't don't return this. I I don't care about the handle. I want this to launch and then finish running on its own, uh, and this thing will be done. And hopefully, it will just finish, and we'll find out if that's true or not. Okay, so what does that mean? That means I want to start a countdown. So we want to take our duration. We want to subtract one. So uh, I want a loop. I might want a while loop, right? Uh, tea kettle drone. Hello. How are you doing today? I might want a while loop because like while 
while it's above zero, subtract one and then send it out. Can I do that? So while the duration uh, as seconds is greater than zero, uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, oh, yeah, we're also going to have a slightly shorter stream today. I think I have to leave in about an hour or so. So it's basically just, you know, an hour or so, maybe an hour and a half. I do have um, some things I need to do this afternoon um, and get ready for them, you know, weird weird things like time and being an adult and all that stuff. And my, my second job stuff, too, wants me to do stuff. Wants me to do stuff earlier in a week this week. Uh, let's see. Okay, so while the direction while the duration SX is greater than zero, I want to now can I subtract? Can I do duration minus equals one? Uh, I wonder if I can do that. No, expected a duration. Okay, so I can kind of do that. So if I do let second equals duration uh, from sex, we'll just do one. Let's do our duration minus equals one second. So we'll subtract one second from you. Hours better than no hour priorities. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's a it's a thing, right? Uh, okay, one second, we do that. Uh, while duration is sex, uh, duration equals um, minus equals one second. Okay, so that will count it down. And then I want to emit out the new one, right? So I want to emitter emit. The value is going to be the duration as sex, and I want the Twitch ads component, which that looks like it's owned by this. Uh, we'll find out if it implements copy. It does not. Wait, no, that's not the error. You need to be mutable. Okay, what are you upset about? Borrow move value, emitter. Okay, so usually it's above that my... Oh, moved, uh, move value into closure here. Okay, so it doesn't like that. So let's go ahead and um, copy the emitter out here. That'll make you happy. Um, also, I kind of feel a little bit weird because I don't want this duration to like people to think that it, it can be mutable up here. So I'm just going to do the same thing here. Just going to let duration equals. I can take ownership of it at this point, uh, but I just sort of want to say like, hey, it's now mutable. And now, now it's going to start going down. Uh, unused result. Okay, so let's context this, and this is um, sending uh, count countdown uh, add time, and then we'll just unwrap this. So, crashy, crashy. Okay, um, I don't have any errors, no warnings. Uh, let's see, so we have you here. This sends it over to the other one. That's great. Um, for our template... We have our ads template. Okay, so I, I'm just sending this to be span 60, so that's obviously not great. Um, this is ads for the index template. Right, I don't have the other thing, so I need to go to you and find out what I named this. Did I create it? I'm testing one, two, three with the emitter. I don't think I need this. Twitch ads is what I called it. Okay, so... And here we're going to have, why would I do that? Twitch ads, I think. Twitch ads, yeah. Okay, so we have Twitch ads now in there. That's good. We start with time remaining zero. Uh, oh, I want I want an if statement. Um, ad start in three minutes. So in case I don't make this, because I am curious whether or not this works at all now, let's get this started so we can uh, see the result. Okay, so ad break starting at 60 already. That is is wrong yeah i just have ad break 60 why why do i have ad break 60 oh right because i just hard coded it didn't i uh right so haha <laughs> uh in components which add okay time remaining is a value 64 okay so i just call this time remaining right so which means i should be able to in here do just time remaining like that right there we go okay so we have ad break zero so in a minute and a half, this should reset to 60 and then hopefully start counting down and it should get all the way to zero before it ends unless my understanding about how the Tokyo spawn threads work isn't true. Um, Uncle Scientist, hello. How are you doing today? And I can even use the hello queue for that. 
Did I get it working yesterday? So I got the hello quick, uh, the hello queue working as, uh, as you can see, uh, when somebody who hasn't spoken at all the, since I launched the hello queue, uh, says hi, it, uh, it shows up here. So like your, your secondary and third messages don't show up in the hello queue. And then when I click it, it goes away. I click anywhere else on, on here. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter. So you've even got clicking on the component, which is really nice. And now we're working on this ad break section. So trying to figure out when the ad break is. We have 30 seconds or so until the next ad break starts. So I'm, I'm, I want to see the ad break pop up to suddenly become 60 and then count down from that back to zero again. And then once we have that, I should be able to do a, uh, I think I should be able to do like an if statement in here. Looking forward to more coffee ads. Yeah. I, uh, I, one of the projects I've, I've considered is like a, um, uh, what is it called? A, a bingo game for ads. Cause that, that could be interesting. All right. Ads starting soon. Any second now, of course, this is the time that it takes forever for it Twitch to decide to actually start the ads. Oh, okay. So I got this message. Ad break started will last for 60 seconds, but we didn't get this one. Now, is that because I, oh, why is live.rs not saved? Okay, this because I didn't do anything there. Did I not actually send the message to ads? Correct. That would um that would do things. So I want to send uh front end events. We want to send Twitch ads and the duration. Okay, you're back and none of those ads were targeted at you. Okay. Uh is that good? I hope that's good. They were actually targeted at you as a two, but your sub deflected them. Sorry. Well, I mean, wait, that's good, right? Okay, so I wasn't apparently sending the event from the stream manager to the front end. So now now we'll get this to the front end. So now theoretically it should work, but I don't want to like write ads for you. So instead we're going to work while we wait for another 16 minutes and 40 seconds, we're going to uh, work on the template. Uh, and I want to do an if statement in here. Now, the for statement was pretty simple, uh, but it didn't have any brackets, but it looked very similar to what REST looks like. So I wonder if we could just do the sa exact same thing. So what if I do something like this? We have a border and we do um, text ads. Uh, we do an if time remaining, if this is equal to zero, and I, I think that it was no brackets, right? So we just do like this. If time remaining is equal to zero, then I want to uh, maybe just say like no ads. So like text, no ads, or like just working or something like that. Um, ads not running. I'm not exactly sure what to put in here. Uh, we can even just put nothing at all and just have like blank text. Let's do ads not running for right now. Uh, otherwise, we'll do ad break, uh span time remaining to have it then be the time remaining okay so if we do this okay ads not running so theoretically when the next ad runs we should receive the message set it to 60 and then continuously count that down and then see the ad break time remaining and then that way the hello queue won't just sort of be here i could set this to like a text space to just to like keep keep this little area clear um or maybe to like do some kind of like oh this could be like a messages area we can we there, there's lots of things we could do with this if i wanted to uh but i'm i'm not going to be worried about it too much uh okay so if that works then this would be ads uh this would be like the entire ads thing so i guess we're in waiting mode again i can't even run an ad manually right now if i wanted to uh even even a shorter ad uh, I think you have to wait a certain amount of time before Twitch would allow you to run an ad. Uh, so let's see. Let's open up our README. Yes, this is message pops up during ads. As soon as this is done, we're good with you. Uh, and then we're going to work on uh, theme changes. I want to reset the change. Are you just using the ad event and not using the endpoint to get what the next ad is? Is yeah. So we tried using that endpoint, and because there's there's some weirdness in it, the the 
library that we're using to consume the Helix API isn't happy with the endpoint because it's basically saying like, hey, it's it's implementing the wrong thing. And it's like, okay, I would have to fork, clone, and update the Twitch API code to handle what Twitch is actually sending back. Twitch doesn't look like they're ever going to change that, even though their document... The Twitch API that we're using uses the correct thing according to the documentation, and there is a ticket and an issue saying that there will, there will not be a change because the documentation is wrong, but then they're like closed without changing it. They're like, okay, well, can you update the documentation? They're like, no. And it's like, okay, cool. No, I, I decided, I, I forked and cloned it, but I decided I didn't want to update it, if that makes sense. Like, I, I didn't want to rely upon my own sort of like weird changes for that. I, don't, I didn't know... I felt like it was going to be going down a really big rabbit hole. So instead of counting down to the, when the next ad is, we're just going to have ads running. Now I could potentially do something where I count down like, you know, 20 minutes or something like that. And then um, as long as I don't have a snooze, that should be relatively accurate, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about that too much. And maybe someday uh twitch and this api will uh uh be happy and work together and everything will be great i guess i could do a message down here at the bottom and i also have room right here i believe it's so, like i could do i t could do two columns like ads not running and then like another message i could do another space below ads and just do two things down and to like have maybe ads at the top and then um like just a message of like, oh, so and so changed the theme to blah blah blah. That that's something we could do too. It's more of like a design decision. And we are send sending the event, and I think I turned off. Did I turn off? I actually don't remember. It it the theme might still work. I don't have a thing to reset the theme. That would be nice to like click on this and it resets the theme for me to be back to what I want it to be. Or like what the normal thing is. Okay, so I guess we can start reworking on this then in the meantime, while we're waiting for another 10 minutes or so, nine minutes. Change theme. Can you have it set the theme for the ads because FPS games are just not my jam? No, I can't. I can't set what ads you get. Uh, wait, can I? That's actually a good question. I, I always thought that I could not, but now, now I'm questioning that. Because look, is there something that I can set where I can say like, hey, target my, like do targeted things. Like monetization, ads. No, this is just when ads run. Okay, I don't... Yeah, it doesn't look like I have the ability to set what the types of ads you get are. That would be really cool, though, if I if I could do that. And if, if that is an ability and I'm just sort of missing it, let me know. I can, I can then set that up. Okay. So here's the change Helix theme. Now, normally I have this print line. Username change the Helix theme to theme. And... Then I have this going to change Helix theme, change Helix theme. It loads, okay, so loading, okay, it loads the current Helix theme into a file, theme value, the new theme, insert the theme into there, and then save it, and then reload the Helix config, and then announce that it got changed. Uh, I don't know if I care about announcing it here, because we can now just put it here. Plus also, every time that I plug uh, the Mac computer into the focus right to capture the audio for it, I end up uh, I ends up creating a little buzz, which is um, not cool, as you might imagine. So like I can hear this. like I'll be able to hear the announce the the theme change thing. but I, I think I think that's working. So now if we take a look at that, it's change helix theme is all one word. and so if I Come back over to, it's not community, view rewards. No, where where is it? I thought it was, oh, power-ups and channel points. Oh, because power-ups are a new thing. I haven't looked at them at all. Power-ups introduce new ways for viewers to support you through bits. They are always enabled on your channel. Cool. I have no idea what those are. I've heard people saying that they're good and also people complaining about them. Uh, default rewards. Okay, so we have those, and then uh, 
change helix theme is active. So that should that should just work. Uh, so I believe we're in Adwaita Adwaita Dark right now. So Acme is like that. That's a that's a really easy win to see. So if I were to oh the power ups now show up at the top. Oh that's kind of it's kind of not fun. Change helix theme. Let's do wrong keyboard Acme. Acme. Could you hear that? It's probably really really quiet. It was loud for me, but that's because I don't have this computer plugged into there. But okay, that works. Yeah, it was pretty quiet. That that makes sense. So uh, let me let me put it back the easy way. Have I looked at the loopback app? That's what you use to capture your Mac audio. The the problem isn't well. Okay, so I am I'm streaming off of a Windows computer, so I need to get the audio from the Mac over into the Windows computer, and that's that's the only problem that that I have there. I know, fancy. So I do have a focus right. So it's one of these boxes which I can't lift high enough up for you to, to you to take a look at and see. Uh, and I have a the ability to do an input, an auxiliary input. And I have maybe it's because I don't have a long enough cable and it sort of like stretches and maybe like touches some other things. Uh, but I have I have one of these things that I don't want to drop. Uh, and then that will go. Yeah, I can plug that into the computer over here. Here, I can show you. Whoa, come on. Oh, I knocked over the cat cam. Okay, well, apparently I have a horrible, uh, horrible amount of um, nodding or whatever, tangling that I've done with these wires. That's fun. So that, that certainly doesn't help. Okay, so it, this is a decently long one. I'm using the cable that came with those headphones uh, because that is the longest one. So if I plug you in, plug you in there, and I can also set my Mac audio to use speakers and headphones, so I can I can get both. And I'll plug you in, plug you in there. Uh, so first off, do you hear a buzzing? Because normally I hear a buzzing when I monitor this, when I have that thing plugged in. Yeah, right. Yeah, I hear a buzzing. You don't hear a buzzing when I talk. Yeah. So it's unfortunate because I don't know how to fix that because like this cable is is as far away from power supplies as I can possibly get it. So I don't know if it's the cable or I mean it could be this thing, the adapter. Oh, ads are starting soon. So any second now. Yeah, and the same buzzing now. So I was hoping I could be able to use this, but I don't think I can I can use the uh that sort of like system. It's just not going to work for us. Either that or it really is just the cables and uh, this specific cable with my adapters aren't compatible for some reason. I don't know why they wouldn't be compatible with each other. But I'm not like an audio person, so like maybe there's something about these that I just don't understand. Okay, we got ad break 60, but it's not counting down. Okay, so the countdown doesn't work. We can see that the ad break starts. Now I'm curious as to whether or not the... Ad break will go back to zero when it's done, in which case the countdown is working, but only behind the scenes and not updating it. Also, I, I kind of find it's funny that I have a hello queue for myself. Okay, and it should be back. It should be around the 60 seconds past mark. And unfortunately, the ad break doesn't work. Uh, what themes do I have installed? If you click on, see, I think do I have the list in here. Yeah, so if you go to the channel point redemptions and you click on the change Helix theme, uh, before you actually send the message that there's a URL you can go to, uh, that will show you all the themes that I have installed that you can then choose from. Okay, so that worked, but also didn't work. Nice, and it worked. And I saw I saw the 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 change too. So I got the changing Helix theme. And here, Uncle Scientist changed the Helix theme to Draco. So I want this type of message somewhere over here. I know, pretty neat, right? Uh, okay, so change Helix. Um, this is the main library. Change font. Okay, add break begin. We get that duration, and so I just send this over to the Twitch. Okay, and that's fine. We go to the front end library. We get you, and then I attempt to do a spawn blocking but I don't think this is gonna work. Does that do validation or can I print any message on your screen? I eventually want it to not, I don't think I have it doing any 
real I, it's doing validation only from like twitch's sites like twitch can validate it saying like hey this is like good or bad right like uh i've noticed that twitch does do that but i don't have any validation past that so if you attempt to set it to a theme that doesn't exist it won't be happy so we haven't it's sort of like it's a good good point sending an event which like you're you're happening but i want to display message on a front end uh we have the announce announce out loud uh so at least i can hear it um and then okay so display message in front end announce out loud uh probably validate that it is using a real font if you set the theme to write quit will it do the wrong thing i have no idea do you want to check do you want to test it like what's the worst that can happen it just writes out right because you would have potentially access to those, but I can tell you exactly what it's doing. Um, huh? No, that that wasn't that. You you'd have to do it through the. Are 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 you only allowed to set it once? You can set it multiple times, right? I don't think I have any. Yeah, as long as you have a thousand points, you can call it multiple times. Uh, but here here's what it's doing. Um, it is for the theme here. It is just setting. It's opening up theme like this theme file. And it's setting this line, which uh, that's a white of dart, but you set it to something else. Oh, it's setting this here. That's not true. Okay, so it's uh, it's opening this config up and it's uh, uh, putting in whatever text you put in here into this line right here. So for example, if I change this to write quit, save it, uh, config reload, this is what it would do. It would it would change it to this, which my guess is the, the equivalent of if I didn't have a theme in here at all, because it probably, there there is no right quit theme. So it it feels like if you put something like really bad in there, I don't, as long as it's something that can be inside of the text file, won't cause weirdness when it's parsing it, then it'll be fine. But it's not going to do anything like um, run arbitrary commands on my system unless there's a zero day in helix that i'm unaware of but i'm trying to update my helix pretty often so therefore if if they do find something hopefully they fix it quickly um validate that's using a real font uh and then i won't uh change back to the original or get uh change back to the original font um button to change back to um my chosen font i also could do a button to keep new font as my chosen font we could do something like that too that could be nice all right display ads message when we were playing we have the 60 second timer down here which is not fun uh and that's just staying up forever because you're not counting down properly so what i'm thinking that we need to do uh, I was really hoping that this would work here with the spawn blocking, but I don't think this is. I've cloned the emitter. Am I, okay, what if I don't clone the emitter? You yelled at me to say, borrow move value emitter, value moved into closure here. What if I just do let emitter equals, did I try this already? Time builder emitter it was a runtime, maybe just runtime emitter. Cannot be sent between threads safely. Okay. So you're, you're super unhappy with that. You're mega unhappy and I can't even see what I was doing anymore. Spawn blocking. There's the emitter. Oh, because it's already in here is this. Okay. So let's do let second emitter, emitter two. So this is really, this is the ads emitter. The runtime emitter. So move that into there, which then you get moved into here. And so I want use ads emitter. Use a move value, and I don't. I think I have to move it, right? Yeah, I have to. I have to move it. Uh, okay, so I have to clone you. So that, I don't think that will work any better. Emitter, the next generation. Emitter two. Emitter three. Emitter twelve. Emitter Vista. Oh, uh, TT, hello. Uh, how are you doing today? Uh, can you set up for me my VS Code? I don't think I can set up your VS Code for you. 
I don't really have a good like video or anything else for like setting up VS Code. On like some of my courses, I have like here's how to set up VS Code for Rust Dev, but not for like just general dev or just like how I use how I use it. In fact, I haven't really used VS Code as like my primary driver in over a year now. So I don't know if I'd be the best person to help out with that. Uh, I do know that um, uh, CJ from the Coding Garden did uh did do some update did do some videos on that so that might be a good uh channel to take a look at see if you could find that video and uh and follow that along but that's the only suggestion that i would have and um uh freak 35 hertz hello how are you doing today all right so i don't think i i don't think this is going to work i think it's going to be the same problem i don't think i i can actually clone the emitter I could potentially throw the emitter into an arc. Huh. I hadn't thought about that. What if I clone the emitter and threw it into an arc? And then I can lock it whenever I want to use it down here. That might work. And we have around five minutes for me to implement that. So instead of doing this, let's do let emitter equals an arc, arc new, uh, mutex new. Throw it in a runtime. Okay, so we have a emitter, which is this arc mutex that gets moved into this first bond blocking thing here. And so then in order to use you, we're going to emitter lock you context. Um, I guess like uh, getting the emitter unwrap. So go ahead and crash if you can't do it. What are you upset about? Oh, right. I can't, I can't context this. I think we just have to unwrap it, right? So, okay, Twitch ads, emitter, lock, unwrap. Okay, uh, we get you that. Um, then inside of here, we're gonna just do another. So let emitter equals emitter.clone. So we can move you in. This becomes emitter, lock, unwrap. And then we're emit out here. So maybe that will work. Uh, for Rust, just install Rust Analyzer, Beta Tamal, and Error Lens. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that that's that's good for Rust. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and make sure you install Rust uh, first, don't you? Does not derive clone? Wait, derive and clone would just allow it to clone. Right, do you mean copy? Maybe I don't need this. Hold on, let's find out. Borrow move value emitter. Yeah, no, I need to, I need to do the copy. The, sorry, I need to manually clone it in order for it to say that it's happy. Okay, yeah, so I don't think it, it doesn't derive clone, co doesn't derive copy, it derives clone, but that's not enough. Okay, so here we go, ads not running. What is with the arc? Wait, what is with the arc? I'm not sure I understand. Um, basically, because I'm, I have to move the arc, I have to clone the arc so I can move it into the second, uh, the red here, and then I can lock and use the emitter at the last second. Does that make sense? It's because I'm using, I'm in a loop, in a thread. Oh, and inside that loop, I'm also spawning another thread. So it's lots of fun stuff. So we're gonna use a smart pointer to see if I can keep the emitter going forever and see if that was the problem. Clone should be sh sufficient without arc. Assuming that the emitter works the way we expect it does, um, I was trying to use clone and it didn't it didn't sort of do the thing. I guess the other thing that we can put here is we can put some um well okay, ad starts in 30 seconds. I will uh we'll test this in 20 seconds or so and then then we'll take a look at that. Um Muhammad is anathema at the top referring to the band anathema. Didn't expect a scene here. No. Oh, okay. I don't actually know. I don't think it does, but uh, is anybody, any of you who are like actually up when Togglebit streams, it, did he name Anathema after the band Anathema? Um, so I'm using Anathema is a, a, a front end library, uh, but it's for the CLI here. And it's what I have running in this window right here. And it is uh, a, it is created by Togglebit on Twitch. And he, as far as I know, didn't, um, I, I don't, I don't actually don't know where the word comes from. So it, it could be from the band, but I don't know for certain. Okay. So any second now we'll get our ads running and it will give like the 60, but then the question is, will we get the countdown? My, my guess is that no, we won't get the countdown because 
it's the two. I think you're correct that the clone wouldn't make it not work. Yeah, it's not counting down. Okay. So that's not the problem. The problem is that this spawn blocking goes away as soon as this. Uh, okay. So as soon as this block is done, we go back through the loop again. That spawn blocking goes out of scope. So it then dies. So what I would want to do is maybe outside of the loop, hold on to it. Yeah, we're in another spawn blocking here. So maybe, maybe right here. So we have, oh, come on. Let me have a double open bracket, open you up. Let's do a let um, thread handles just be an empty vector. Okay, so we make you mutable and then we'll do thread handles and we'll push that in to here. Why would it stop with the handle dropped? I'm not sure. Uh, the async ones don't seem to do that, but I don't know about these ones at all. So it's it's a little bit hard to tell. Um, let's see. How to learn Rust? Truly, any good suggestions? Uh, well, I guess like what what level are you? Are you um like what? How much programming experience do you have? Like, is it going to be your first language? Is it? Uh, do you know uh, another language pretty well? Um, because the answer changes depending upon if it's your first language or if it's like a second or a third language. If it's your first language, then I would I would recommend finding a I don't have any guides like that I know of elsewhere to to go with. So I would recommend finding someone who knows how to teach and or at least knows how to mentor to teach you Rust and like work with them, right? Or finding like a course online uh, probably not course online from like a university or something that goes through and says like, Hey, we're learning programming and our first language is rust. But if it's not the first language, if it's a second language, I would start with the rust book. It's like the actual rust book. And, uh, you can find that on rust, uh, the rust languages homepage and read through that at least the first, I think 10 or 14 chapters is, is like good enough, I think. And then after that, pretty much any course or any like online free series uh, will be good after that. Like that, that the book is going to be pretty good at getting you going if you know programming already. So, and to, okay, to go back to you, Isitsu, why would it stop if the handle is, is dropped? I don't know for certain if it would or not. I think I have this theory that when the handle is dropped, it cleans up everything. It's like a cancel almost, I think. Okay, so you're a beginner. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have anything right now. I um, I have some ideas about how I could create some like courses myself for that, but I don't feel that I'm ready to to dive into it. It's um, I don't think I can do a good enough job as it is right now. Okay, your private language, your first language is Python. Okay, so you're still a beginner, but you have another language. In that case, I think you're going to be fine with the second language there. So go, go read the book. Like the, when, whenever we, call, we say like the book, what we mean is if you go to rustlang.org uh, and you go to learn and it is read the book, affectionately nicknamed the book. So that's, that's what it is. So just click on this. Um, and, uh, just go through it. And there are a whole bunch of chapters here and, oh, it's actually changed. Okay. Let's see. Smart pointers are on 15 on oh, like patterns and matching. Okay. I would say 18, read the first 18 chapters after that. Um, you can come back to it for a reference. And like, if you're really interested in it, then there's these other ones, but yeah, this is what I would recommend. For, for learning Rust as like as somebody who has already knows a little bit of another language. Okay, maybe can I can I force this? I want a little bit better of a back and forth of this. I want stream event ad break begin. That's great. But what if I just hard code in here? And that's a loop. So what if I do this one time and I just say front end events, we're gonna send events, switch ads, uh, just to make sure it's different. We'll do, uh, 120 await context, um, sending test events, question mark you. Okay. So if I do that, oh, this has to be a duration. 
Duration from a second, 120. Okay, so if we do that, now every time we restart you, we should just get 120 seconds going. Hold on, what, what am I doing? I'm going to there. Okay, so yeah, starting with 120 seconds and that is not counting down. So my guess is that unless duration always ends up being the same 60 or whatever, and it's never changing. So if I do testing, um, and then I want maybe the duration. Okay, so I'm not getting, uh, let's see, I'm not getting a hello, but we know that this is running because we were getting the, the 60 showing up before. And so we, we know like it's sending 120 and so it's, we're sending this duration in. I'm not returning this and it's not crashing. So therefore it must be, it runs into here, but we don't get the print line unless, yeah. Okay, so that didn't work at all. Their only way to make a test to generate Twitch events for you. But in this case, uh, I mean, yeah, I could, I could, can I write a test for, for like actually getting the Twitch events? Uh, yeah, I would have to like, if I created a mock Twitch events listener that could send the Twitch events to me whenever I want to, I'm just lazy. <laughs> so I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. Okay. So I don't, spawn blocking isn't, oh, can I do spawn blocking within spawn blocking? Maybe that's a, that's another potential issue here. I don't have that many things running, so I don't think I'm running into an upper bound problem. Okay, so you're right, Isitsu. They'll just keep on running, regardless of what happens, even if they go out of, out of scope. Uh, Tea Kettle, you don't understand how you make friends or work with anybody in a soft dev world. Every time I've asked humbly, I've basically been called a leech and people assume I just want free lessons, which I don't. I'm fairly confident in my skills and ability to contribute. I just want struggle with working on your own. So what you want is like, not, you don't want, you don't want pairing with somebody or do you want to pair with somebody or is it more, you just want to work near people? Uh, which I think the co the, the, the term is co-working. Um, uncle scientist, thanks for hanging out and uh, have a great rest of your day. People in the soft dev have some kind of arrogance or something at the very least they don't have to make, I mean, the, the problem, the problem is it's just people like th there's a lot of people out there who are not going to be receptive to pretty much anything we say, right? Like that's just how things are, but there's going to be a lot of people who are receptive to it. And the question is, how do we find those people, right? Like, because they're not necessarily, especially if they're not extroverts, they're not going to be advertising that they're willing to do anything like that. All right, I'm going to snooze the ad break to give us more chance. Okay. So that's everything here. That's not really helping with anything. It's a hard thing because no entrepreneur can profit off of helping developers find friends to work with. So of course it doesn't really exist. Yeah, that I mean, like the closest that we found so far is like Discord, uh, Meetup, but doesn't Meetup like lose money hand over fist? Um, there's, th those are pretty much the only types of things that really exist out there for finding people to hang out with. Um, I guess like, is, is it a, like a co-working type thing? Like they don't have to be working on the same thing you're working on. It's more of, you just want to work together with people, right? What? No, what that. Okay. So can I do, is there Tokyo spawning in a spawn? Can I do nested, nested Tokyo spawn blocking? So there's a stack overflow question. So there's the Tokyo tasks thing. You can't spawn a long running task without blocking a parent by spawning a task that, well, I mean, okay. That's not what I was hoping to do. Okay. You were hoping to work on the same project with someone and be able to talk, of course, too much talking will impede in actual productivity. Yeah. Okay. So it's basically working on the same project and then just sort of like chatting with them. Yeah. That's, that is a really tough thing to do, especially in this world, because like we're all working on our own things and I guess that's where like companies come in. So if it's somebody to work on the things that you're working on, either it's going to be you're paying them to, or it's like some kind of open source thing where you're all, where you're both working on the same thing. And if you're trying to join somebody else's project, either they're going to pay you for it where it's now your job or it's again another open source project that they're they're creating so i don't know um that that could be something interesting to do with um the community like maybe we can do something where like one day a week 
you know, we could all just sort of hang out and work on work on something together, like on Discord, and just have it not be a stream, just sort of chatting. But um, I don't know. I, I I don't have like an a suggested sort of solution for that because it is it is a difficult problem. So I don't see anything like I'm having trouble searching to see if there's a problem with putting a, a spawn blocking in a spawn blocking. I don't think that's a problem. I, I think that should just work, right? So, but my print line, I guess like as a as a test here. So events to chats, we do that. So let's, let's do this. We'll say about to um, send a message to Twitch ads component. Um, and then we'll do another print line about to uh i guess like run task to count down um in task duration left this duration yeah. okay so if we do this yeah that sucks i'm sorry about that tea kettle is there a specific project that you're you're hoping to join in is it is it just sort of like hanging out or is it like specifically coding type stuff that you want to uh to work on oh wait what that immediately dropped down to zero. Uh, hold on. I, yes, that is a classic problem. I need to sleep, thread, sleep for one second. Maybe I'm counting down all in one second. And therefore the original one is the only one that works. Okay, the duration left is is working now. Okay, so that's that's a good sign, but the ad break here doesn't update. Okay, another smooth. We're, we're, we're getting really close. There seems to be some um, inherent undertones of impotence or inferior by your... Yeah, it's not a good reason to bully anybody. No, absolutely. You're right about that. You know, this might be... This is probably a good... Um, it's probably a good topic. We should probably discuss this on the Discord. And I think you're in there, right? Can I remove the handle list and arc and it still work? Good, good question. Let's find out. So let's not push here. So if I don't push there... And then I'm just going to go ahead and here, we're just going to run that. That'd be fine. Wait, what did I do? Oh, type. Okay. So I do need to get rid of you. Okay. So that's, this is still, okay. So it's still working as in, it's still sending these print lines. So about to send a message, this duration, so duration left. Yeah. So duration left is the correct duration. And I'm trying to admit as seconds to the Twitch ads component. The Twitch ads component is attempting to set the remaining time to the time remaining, right? So we can just say um, setting time remaining, uh, which means that for all these print lines, get rid of you, don't need you anymore. No, this just got this once. Setting time remaining 120. Interesting. Okay. We know it's sending it multiple times. It's going through this loop here. But this emitter is only happening once. Huh. Why is it only sending... Am I only allowed to use the emitter once? Okay, we can try... We can try removing the arc and everything like that. So what was that? That was in the main library. So we have arc new mutex. So if we delete you... Okay, so we have emitter, runtime emitter. We do that. So we don't have to lock and wrap you. We don't have to lock and unwrap you or you... Uh, we emit or clone you, and then we do your thing. Okay. And it's only getting the setting time remaining once. That's our problem. That's the issue. Is it a type mismatch? It's not crashing or... Here, if... Hold result unwrap. Oh, close... I said, yeah, because when I control seed it, that caused this error because I, I closed the channel. So that's interesting. Where does it receive the 120? Sure. It receives the 120... In the Twitch ads components right here, here's that setting time remaining uh, under this message function. So for the Twitch ads component, it receives a message and then the state, and then it does the thing. So setting time remaining to do that. And then I state time remaining set to be this. Well, yeah, the message is a duration. Am I not sending that as a duration? I thought I was sending it as a duration. Uh, friend in live. Okay, so here. Okay, event Twitch ads. We get duration, and I just emit this out to them, and then I create this block, and so we do the spawn blocking, 
Why now duration minus one equals that? Oh yeah, maybe maybe that's maybe that is the problem. There we go. Okay, you got it. Thank you. All right, just in time. We have three and a half minutes before the next ad break. Uh, so let's head back over to here. We can get rid of this print line. And in our front end library here, we can remove, oh, where am I just sending it? Zilby, hi, want to come on in? Green runtime. Oh. Okay, so I set that. Green runtime, get the emitter. Wait, sleep. It was up above here? Where did I put it? Oh, 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 it wasn't uh, in here at all. It was in, just in here. There, front end event send 120. Okay, so we go away right there. We set you. Everything should be happy. Uh, stream event RS. I don't actually knew. Oh, that's the ad break thing. Um, here, I'll just save that. Uh, that'll be fine. Uh, okay, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and restart you. Okay, so now, now our ads are not running. And then when it starts running, we should get an ads and then it should count down properly. Okay. I think we got it. And that's really interesting that that didn't cause a, it didn't cause a crash. That's interesting. That must be a rust problem because I do as sex as sex. Oh, because I tell it that it's going to be a duration, but it wasn't a duration that I passed it. And because it wasn't a duration, it got dropped from the channel. I feel that that's a problem. Oh, but it's, it's just a, yeah, I don't know how to how to fix that. Like, I don't know how more of a library issue. Yeah, I wonder if that's something we can talk, we can talk to Toggle a bit about. Maybe uh, if I remember, I'll, I'll send him a message uh, later and just sort of mention we ran into this problem. OK, ad break starts in around 10 seconds. And uh, for those of you who don't get ads, we'll be able to see the ads running up here. It does sound like it should be a compile error, doesn't it? Yeah, I agree with that 100 percent. OK. Any second now. I love how like while we're waiting, like while we're actually waiting for the ads to start, it takes forever for them to start, which is fun. It would be, but the emitter anathema is sending box dine any. That would do it. That would literally allow me to do anything and nobody would care. Nothing would care. Anywhere, anytime. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, Anshel said hi, and um, the break timer. Hey, hey, and break time, ad break, uh, counting down now, prop properly. Excellent. Okay, we'll say hi to, to Anshel uh, when we're done. I'll just go ahead and do that. Silby really wants food. I didn't, uh, he didn't eat very much of his breakfast this morning, and he had a few bites of it. Then I put the rest back in the fridge, and now he's like, wait, I want food now. But I think this is going to be a good time, a good place to, to end because we have the ad break working and we have hello key working, which is awesome. So we display the ads message and it should go back to ad break, not no ad break. Community is back according to Twitch. Ads not running. Excellent. Okay. I think we got this working. Uh, Anshul, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, sorry that you stopped by, said hello, and then the ad started running immediately. Okay. Oh, yeah. We've made really good progress. So we now have the ad sort of pop up here. So now you can see the ad status for Twitch ads here, which is nice. Anathema uses Flume, which is a typed, which is typed, but the library itself erases the messages. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So um, we've now done all this stuff. Next time when we, run the, when we work on this project, we're going to work on uh, doing little updates for the changing theme and adding in some front end type thing for the theme change. Right now, technically, the theme change works, right? Like we're working on Dracula right now, which is what um, uh, Uncle Scientist put in. Um, for example, if I want to go back to Adwaita Dark, I could do that myself if I use the right keyboard like that. So I like that. Um, and let's see, we're good. Okay, button to change. No, nope. change back to my chosen font. Button to keep the new font as my chosen font. Um, we could even do a countdown to change the back. That would be another thing too. Uh, but anyways, that's gonna be the next sort of thing for us to work on with this. Um, oh yeah, so let's do, instead of button to change back, 
let's do um change back after uh set after timer runs out we'll do that because now that we know how to do the timer we can do that over and over and again which will be nice okay so we have you let's go ahead and quit out of here and uh what is our what is our update for this we uh basically display status of ads um on the front end and pushing that on up all right well i mentioned that today is going to be a little bit of a shorter stream uh because i do have some work for the front you know my my um my uh uh day day company day job to to work on toggle bit hello how are you doing today um uh take a look at this we've got anathema running and i'm able to do this uh, with the, the hello queue. So I can see that you're the first person, this is the first time you said hi, and then it doesn't show up again. So now I can acknowledge that I said hi to you. So yeah, it's uh, it's really nice. Um, there was one bug that we ran into today that was kind of annoying, but I'm not really sure what you're gonna do about this. I sent a, here, let's, uh, I'll show you. I'll show you what we ran into. So in our front end, I'm creating a countdown. Uh, so actually in a way, having an update or something, like having some kind of like update thing that I could run in the component would be really nice, but I don't know how to do that. Is there a way for me to have like an update, like an, on a, um, like in the update loop or something like that to, to run some logic? Yeah, it may not be a bug. It may be just a, a feature of it. But anyways, I am uh, counting down every second and emitting out the new duration. So I can, when the ads are running, I can uh, say like, hey, uh, ads are currently running countdown of like one, like, you know, 60, 59, 58. So we can see how long until ads are done. And I'm sending a duration here. I forgot that I was sending a duration and did an as sex like this. Um, but in my component, I've set that the message is gonna be a duration. So because I did that and I initially sent just a U64, it dropped the message completely. So I didn't receive it, which obviously is a problem. Yeah, just swallowed the message. But because of there was no um, there was no feedback for that. So I had to sort of figure it out. We had a well, a Sitsu figured it out for us. But like we had to figure that out because otherwise we wouldn't know at all. The uh, um, if I had like a tick. So imagine if I had like a update or tick or, or something like that. I, I'm not really sure what it is. Like I would love to have like a little bit of logic I can run in here to say like on update now, go ahead and and run like this. I don't know. Like I don't actually know if an on tick is a good idea or not. Currently I'm putting this code right here where when I receive this message that ads have started, I do a spawn blocking uh, a Tokyo method and just now every second run, you know, send a new number out to it. So that's, that's what that is. Oh, and we had another question, which I have no idea if, uh, Mohammed, if you're still here on YouTube, but, uh, Mohammed asked if anathema was referring to the, the name anathema or was referring to the band anathema. You can't make a type save because the emitter can send anything to anyone, but you'll think on it more. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, the only negative toggle bit is that when it's a type that wasn't there, I didn't get any feedback. That's the only thing is like it made it really hard to find out. You were a fan of the band. Okay, so it that didn't answer the question though. Is is it named out of the band or are you just a fan? What is the Twitch ads component here? Let's go back to that. Here's the Twitch ads component. Anathema is a play on word, words curses, but there is a reference to one of the songs by the band in the docs. Nice. Okay, so both. Oh, the actual, like the, the template, you mean? You mean the template? That's what I'm doing. The variable I pass to emit. This thing here, the second variable, the Twitch ads component, this here. Okay, yeah, so Twitch ad component. Uh, when I do the runtime builder register component, I uh, that's where I get the component ID. Yeah. The only thing I can think of right now when it comes to messages, we get a result T, so on message, we can receive an error that's an invalid type. I can see that being helpful. Like I can also see like that adds a little bit of boilerplate. We have to write for everything, but also if there's a problem, you know, it kind of kind of helps us know that it, it's a problem. If there's a way to make that component ID know about the actual component type, 
you can add a bound. Oh, true. Yeah. So like message type here. Oh, you can't. Okay. The emitter can emit to any component. Okay. Good. Good to know. All right. So yeah, the, the only sort of like the only leftover doesn't feel right thing is uh, when I'm handling, I'm, I'm taking in messages from this other, uh, the other part of my app and I'm handling all these events coming here and then I'm just emitting them out to the components. And then I'm starting this sort of like loop through here to then just like start a countdown for that. I don't, I feel that this should, I guess I could put this as a function inside the component and then call it there. Uh, yeah, that's probably what I should probably do is like put functions for this inside of the file because then it's going to be a little bit more easy to sort of like see what I'm working on. Okay. Anyways, things, you know, things to consider to think about. I really like where Anathema is going. I like what we can do with it. I like the fact that I can click on things and uh, that's like interactivity that I've not really played with before with um, uh, with CLI. So that's really nice. Uh, ignore this part. I have some print lines going on that is always fun to see. Uh, but yeah, everything is so far running pretty nicely. Um, and I think with that, I don't have anything else. Please dump some text in Discord channel. I love the feedback and want to be sure I don't misunderstand it. Okay, I will try to remember to do that later today. Um, and if I forget, maybe remind me and I will then dump it in there and we can have a chat about it. So anyway, with that, I don't think I have anything else we want to or need to discuss. So I need to go off and work on day job stuff. Uh, so I'll be back here tomorrow at around 9.45 a.m. Mountain Time, same time as this morning. And we're going to be working on that uh, uh, I, IAP, the Centralized Authentication Project. So with that, let's have a good one and see you next time. Bye.